Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some dark romances to recommend to you. Now some people might pop into my channel and be like, hmm, Ava doesn't really read dark romance. Why is she making a dark romance rec video? Okay, I do read dark romances. Um, they're just like, I'm very picky with them. Um, so <laughs> I don't pick them up a lot, but I, I do read them. I'm just very picky in the ones that I do pick up and the ones that I specifically love. I've read quite a few more than what are on this list. However, I don't think I would recommend them to other people. You know what I mean? With that being said, I know a lot of these books have a lot of trigger warnings, which I have, and I think every single Goodreads review that I've made for these, and if I have written them down, I'll make sure to mention them in this video as well. So a lot of these books have trigger warnings and whatnot and lean more towards the darker side. And I also wanna say there are some like very taboo uh, subjects in these books and very triggering things in here, um, just because like these books have like cheating and some other things that are quite serious. That doesn't mean I support those things in real life. You know what I mean? We're gonna keep it in our mind. We're gonna know that these are books, okay? Awesome. Now let, let's get started in these dark romances. Probably my favorite series to recommend in the dark romance genre sphere. Um, these books I think were my first toe dip into dark romance and whew, I feel like I dove off the deep end. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like I should have like gone the kiddie pool, but no, I like whoop, jumped in the deep end with the um, Tainted Heart series by Lila James. I read the uh, Mafia and His Angel trilogy by her and uh, whoo wee, that series has probably every single trigger warning you can think of. All three books in this book series are about Alessio and I think her name's Alea. Now Alea, at the beginning of book number one, she is a part of a mafia family. Her dad is a mafia boss, I think. And she has been arranged to marry this guy, a part of their like mafia family. She is terrified. He just mentions these horrible, depraved things that he's gonna do to her. Also, sorry for the chainsaw. If you hear the chainsaw, my dad is chopping wood outside. So <laughs> thanks dad. So anyway, the heroine of the story, she is not into the guy that her dad has told her to marry because he is awful. Okay. He is horrible. She ends up finding a way to escape one night, ends up running, just running out of the house, ends up escaping the property and finds this car on the side of the road with its door open. And she's like, oh my gosh, like my saving grace. And so she just jumps into the car and hides in the car. Car drives away. She's like, oh my gosh, I've escaped. And then the door finally opens when it stops and she just darts out of it into the nearest building she could find, which happens to be Alessio's house. What she doesn't know is her family's like mafia rival. Okay. She ends up running into the house, hiding under a bed in the room and Alessio ends up finding her and immediately thinks that she is some spy sent from this guy's family. And he has the mentality of keep your enemies close. And so he hires her as a maid in his household, but she's very naive about the world because she's been shut in by her family. It deals a lot with mafia and the ties to the mafia and some very dark subject matter, okay? So um, take with that with a grain of salt. I think these books were originally like um, fan fiction of some sort and they're now like their own entity, but man, these things are very dark. Okay, I'm warning you now. <laughs> I do wanna mention the first two books in the Never After series by Emily McIntyre. I've only read the first two. There's more books out in the series. So I'm gonna be recommending the ones that I've read. So first is Hooked which is a Peter Pan retelling. All these books in the series are like dark fairy tale, Disney retellings, if you will. So Hooked um, is a Peter Pan retelling, obviously. And Wendy um, is the daughter to Peter. And our hero in here is Hook. He ends up meeting Wendy at a club one night, I think a club he owns. They hit it off and he's very intrigued by her. They like, I think have a few dates and they're really getting to know one another. Then he figures out that she is the daughter of his like ultimate rival and he decides to kidnap her because he believes that Wendy knows about him and like set all this up and is planning on taking him down and she doesn't know anything. She doesn't know what is going on. And so she's kind of like being tortured and used by him because of nothing. Like she's not doing anything and she keeps reiterating that and he does not believe her. So it's a very dark version of Peter Pan. <laughs> and then we also have Scarred which is a dark version of The Lion King. And there's also no lions in here. It's like real people, okay? But our hero in here is Scar. And this is his romance with Sarah, who is arranged to marry his brother, who is the king of this land. Um, basically like the Mufasa character, okay? And all Scar has ever wanted to do his whole life is to get his brother off the throne. He doesn't think his brother deserves it. And he has his reasons why. And then he ends up meeting Sarah and his priorities shift 
And instead of just wanting his brother off the throne, he's like, but I also want Sarah and I don't want my brother to have her. So I'm gonna do everything, any and anything possible to make Sarah mine and for her to beg to be mine, like crawl on her knees to be mine. So, ooh, this one is so hot. Emily McIntyre knows how to write her butt off with these dark retellings. And I'm just about to pick up, I think, Wretched, the third book, pretty soon, which I think that one is a, a Wizard of Oz retelling, if I'm not mistaken. There's also a, I think, Aladdin one and a Hunchback of Notre Dame, which is the one that I want to read so bad, but I want to read the books in order. So I'm holding myself off. I am being responsible. Ooh, one, ooh, one of the darkest books that I read that I feel like is a staple for everybody is Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. This is a like historical pirate romance. Bennett is our heroine of the story. She is a female pirate. Her dad was this very known, like basically pirate king. He ends up dying and she kind of like takes up his place. She's on the run from quite a few people because she's a pirate. Pirates are illegal in this time period, right? It gave me huge Pirates of the Caribbean vibes, just be aware, okay. Um, and yeah, she's on the run from her husband. You, you, know, you don't know why, but she's on the run from her husband. And then while she's running away from her husband, Ashley Cutler ends up kidnapping her, who is a like pirate hunter and keeping her in his quarters and kind of like torturing her, but also falling in love with her at the same time. So you have both these men falling in love with Beckett. You have her husband and this man who kidnapped her. And that's all I really want to say. This book gets so dark. I think I wrote out the trigger warnings on here. You have um, SA on page a few times. So just please be aware of that. Like sexual assault on page. Um, you have suicide, grief over death of a loved one, kidnapping, torture, death, gore, slavery, dismemberment, and infertility. So please be aware of all those things. But this book is like one of those books you cannot look away from. You can't. Like you have to read it if you love romance, especially dark romance. We're getting back into mafia books. This one is Kingdom Fall by A. Zavarelli. Our heroine of the story is our nanny. Okay, and the hero is a single dad. I was like, I think he has five, six year old son and he is a mafia boss and he hires the heroine to be his son's nanny. There's a bunch of secrets and hidden identities and like everyone in this story. And so there's a lot going on. The heroine also has a disability. She um, cannot speak. It's very painful for her to speak. So she communicates via ASL. She's teaching the little boy how to talk to her via ASL and then also by writing. But I just really love this one. There's so many twists and turns in here. It was such a great read, but there's also like a bunch of trigger warnings in here. So there's like blood, gore, torture, beating, kidnapping, and graphic depictions of violence. This man is definitely touch her and you die. Touch her and I chop you up kind of dude. So I have read a few Adelaide Forest books. Adelaide Forest writes a lot of dark romances. One that was absolutely bizarre to me, and I don't even know what to think of it. I don't know if I liked it. I don't know if I didn't like it. It's like one of those books that's like, I don't know what to think of you is wrong. That's the title of this book is wrong. Our hero of this story is very attracted to his best friend's daughter. And then he decides to go to this club or use this app or something where he's gonna hook up with a girl that looks very similar to her. He wants to meet her at this specific place and Everly just so happens that his best friend's daughter just happens to show up there. And he's like, oh my gosh, she's here. She must be the person who answered like the, the ad that I wanted essentially. And so he's like, okay, all bets are off. She's mine now. Um, and he has this kink, if you will, for forcing himself. Um, and it isn't until after they've already been together that he realizes she was not there willingly. Like she did not sign up for that. She didn't know what he was gonna do. Her protests were real during that whole situation. And um, that's all I wanna leave you with. So um, this book, it's really dark. I don't know what to think about this book, but it's a dark romance. So I, I had to mention it. And then another Adelaide Forest that I was like, what even? I don't know if Adelaide Forest is for me anymore, but these books, whew, there were some points where I was just had my earbuds in listening and I was just staring at the wall being like, what is going on? <laughs> so this is Until Tomorrow Comes by Adelaide Forest, the first book in her Beauty and Lies series. I have read also book number two. I won't be continuing on with the series because this hero isn't necessarily for me personally because he was a little bit too brutal for me in book number two. Um, in book number one, he's good though. I'll read about him. Like he's not good. He does some messed up stuff, but like he's not as bad as book number two. I felt like in book number two, he was being brutal just to be brutal. Whereas like number one, he had like a backstory and everything. You know what I mean? Anyway, so Raphael is a mafia boss. He's from Ibiza and he goes to America for some deal, right? He ends up getting out of the car one day and ends up seeing this girl. I think she's like 16 walking down the street with her friend and is immediately he's captivated by her. He's like, I want her. He sends his men to stalk her, figure out everything about her. He figures out that she's like 16, she's underage. And he's like, oh crap, I cannot 
be with her so he's going to watch her and wait for her to turn of age and then he's gonna make her his okay and there's this whole scheme on making the heroine his and all this stuff she has no idea who this man is no idea that he's been watching her for years i think her trip after she graduates college like her friends they go to ibiza because he has this whole grand scheme planned out anyway she ends up meeting him there they have this little tryst together and uh he's fully into her and it's like i'm in love with you and she's like i don't know you what are you talking about and he is so mad that she does not return his feelings so he kidnaps her and i'm like dude you've known about her for years she just met you a few days ago of course she's not in love with you yet like chill out but this dude is not chill to say the least there's kind of like mafia stuff involved as well in this book but yeah this series gets very dark next is one i love to talk about so i'll quickly mention it this is pestilence by laura thalassa the first book in her force horsemen se four horsemen series this is the first book in like a series about four men of the apocalypse coming down to basically destroy the earth right um so pestilence is like god of plague essentially and um he's spreading sickness throughout the world and the heroine really wants to end him so she comes up with this grand like plan of luring him and blowing him up she ends up doing just that she's like oh my gosh i killed him i did it this is by the way like in the first chapter so i'm not spoiling anything she doesn't know though that pestilence cannot die he'll just regenerate so that's what he does he ends up finding her after he regenerates and it's like you're gonna pay for killing me um i'm going to drag you along throughout my whole journey throughout the country and you're gonna watch me kill all your people all the humans um and then throughout this somehow the two of them fall in love with each other it's it's a lot but like it was believable at the same time and lastly i have two novellas to mention quickly is brought for vow by shauna bell this is the first book in a uh, mafia romance series it's like a small prequel the heroine of the story has a mother who is very sick and ill and she ends up bringing her daughter who's like 16 at the time i want to say to this very dangerous mafia man's doorstep they apparently have history their families have history and she basically tells him take care of my daughter and she leaves her because she knows that she's dying soon and she cannot take care of her um and so this guy ends up becoming her guardian essentially and it's a guardian ward romance we don't really get that until we get to like the main book this is the prequel book i still have to read the main book in the series but this book like mentions like torture and stuff because he's this big mafia boss he's torturing men killing men there is a man who tries to sa the heroine on page not the hero so like please be aware of that and i definitely want to get into the other books in the series as well but if you want like a quick short novella i definitely recommend this one and then also i have aries by Gemma james this one is one of the other first darker books that i read i can't remember a lot of it i haven't finished this whole series i don't know if i'm going to but this definitely made me dip my toe into the genre i feel like it's a good kiddie pool uh, dark book um so each book in the series this is the first book in the zodiac queen series okay um so each book in the series is centered around a different zodiac sign right so her heroine is a zodiac queen she gets sent to this island where she is going to spend i think a month with one of the kings like the heads of a zodiac family and they get to do whatever they want to her and she has to do it like no matter what um, so the first book is about like the leader of the Aries household, like having her for a whole month and doing whatever he wants to her. And in the end, there's going to be an auction, just to say a virgin throughout this whole thing. There's going to be an auction for her virginity and basically to become her husband. It's going to be an auction for her. So it's a lot. It's, <laughs> I feel like it's dark and, but I also at the same time, I felt like it was a good starter book for me. Anyways, there you have it. Those are some dark romances for you. Let me know down below if you've read any of these things or if you plan to. Also, let me know down below what your favorite dark romances are. I would love to know. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a black heart emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.